This rain is going to slowly keep marching eastward, slowly moving toward us. But it looks like as we look at our computer model guidance, we're going to get into the low and mid 80s before the clouds get here. 2 o'clock, we're looking at 82 to 84 degrees, and then the clouds get here. But at 9 o'clock, between 9 and 10, when the fireworks are going off, in a lot of spots, not only on the East River at 9, 20, it'll just be cloudy skies. However, right at the end of fireworks, that's when some showers will start to creep in. 11 o'clock is probably the time when this batch of rain starts coming over the area. So if you're, you, know, you get in fireworks, take your umbrella, probably leaving or getting out or getting away you got you got some time but uh, there'll be some showers starting around 11 o'clock midnight and then lasting through the morning tomorrow and we'll talk about that in your accurate weather forecast so fireworks should be able to get the macy's fireworks in okay but showers possibly uh, just after you want to be ready for that all right michelle joe watch back to you guys thank watch them and skedaddle thank you so much Bill. Yes. with an eye to the skies uh, hundreds of thousands of people are going to pack each side of the east river for tonight's fireworks display it's also going to be the first real test of the NYPD's Critical Response Command, a new force specially trained to prevent and to react to attacks. Eyewitness News reporter Dre Clark is in Long Island City with more. Good afternoon, Dre. Good afternoon, Michelle. More than 56,000 fireworks will light up the sky over the East River. It is the largest fireworks show in the country, and they're expecting more than a million people to come out for the show, which is scheduled to start at 925 and last for about 25 minutes or so. Security is a major component in making sure this event is a success. We'll talk more about that in a moment. But this morning, they were busy putting the finishing touches on the event, making sure everything is in place. This is the 40th anniversary of the Macy's Fireworks Spectacular. It is always very well done and highly anticipated. And again, we're expecting a very large crowd to come out and watch the show this evening. But now let's talk more about that security. The NYPD will be using uh, its enhanced counterterrorism overlay. A part of that plan calls for uh, monitoring some 9,000 video feeds from cameras that will be spread out all across the city. And this year, the NYPD will be using its critical response command. Those are the heavily armed, well-equipped officers who stand at the ready, and they can literally respond to any major incident in a moment's notice. So there will be uh, uh, boats on the water, NYPD as well as Coast Guard. There will be helicopters in the air and thousands of police officers spread out across the streets. Some you will see in uniform, many you will see will not be in uniform. They will be wearing plain clothes. The idea, again, to make sure they cast a wide net to make sure everyone is safe. Also included, many of the 1,200 officers from the department's most recent graduating class here, they will also be in the security mix. And here is more from Police Commissioner Breton, making sure those officers are prepared. You have now become guardians at the gate of this great city, watchmen to protect the eight and a half million people who live here against those forces of evil. And in addition to all of that manpower, there will also be eight vapor sniffing and bomb sniffing dogs also working their way throughout the crowd. They can uh, detect if there's some type of radiation or any type of chemical that could lead to a mass casualty event. We should mention most importantly though, there is no known credible threat to New York City on this independence holiday. We're live this morning, or I should say this afternoon in Queens, Dre Clark, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Okay, Dre, thank you. Crowds of people flock to the beach this weekend to spend Independence Day soaking up the sun on the sand. That's where we find Long Island reporter Kristen Thorne this afternoon. She's at Jones Beach. Hello, Kristen. Hello there, Joe. I wish I was out on the sand. That would be nice, but this is such a great assignment. What a beautiful 4th of July. I mean, you can't ask for better weather. There's low humidity, the beautiful sun, a nice breeze out here. It is going to be a packed day today here at Jones Beach. We got some video of the crowds of people arriving earlier this morning, and we're talking crowds. I mean, people really had to like, you know, they were shoulder to shoulder getting down onto the beach with their coolers, their beach chairs. We saw a lot of people in um, 4th of July gear, all the red, white, and blue. Um, just going to be such a wonderful day. And for a lot of people, this is a yearly family tradition. We do this all the time. My son loves it here and my grandson, this is number one place. For, for, and we spend the whole day and night. 
Yeah, that Millie Franco there, what she means by at night is they will still be here for the fireworks later on tonight. Thousands of people expected. The second year in the row, in a row, that the fireworks are going to be going on here. Remember, they were on hiatus for several years, so people just happy that it seems that this will become a regular 4th of July experience here at Jones Beach. We're live at Jones Beach. I'm Kristen Thorne, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Speaking of fireworks, Kristen, for more information about the Macy's Fireworks Show in New York uh, City or to find one in your neighborhood, you got to check out our complete list at ABC 7 NY. It's also on our free news app. Michelle? Well, the NYPD is investigating a deadly shooting involving an off-duty police officer. Investigators say it involved road rage and that the officer shot and killed a driver in Brooklyn. And the driver's family was there to witness all of it. Eyewitness News reporter Diana Rocco is in East New York with the latest on this investigation. Diana. And Michelle, this investigation is now going on 12 hours and we still have quite an extensive crime scene this noon with Atlantic Avenue still closed. Meanwhile, the family of Delron Dempsey is now looking for answers why he was shot and killed. And police sources tell Eyewitness News this off-duty officer may have some explaining to do. For him not to be here right now is sickening. Victor Dempsey talks about the death of his older brother early Monday morning. 37-year-old Delron Smalls Dempsey was shot in the head by an off-duty NYPD officer after a road rage incident on Atlantic Avenue with his wife and two kids inside the car. We was told my brother struck the officer. He's not that type of person to strike an officer. He, again, he was with his family in a car with a newborn baby. Police say the officer and Dempsey got into a dispute while the two were driving. When the car stopped at Atlantic and Bradford, police say Dempsey got out and began punching the officer through an open car window. The off-duty officer fired his weapon three times, one shot hitting Dempsey in the head. There's no reason why he should be dead. So we're not trusting of the internal affairs investigation, police policing the police. He killed, he murdered a unarmed civilian, father of a five-month-old who was in the car with him, and he didn't retreat. Police closed Atlantic Avenue while the crime scene unit investigated. Family members wouldn't say how the road rage incident started, only that Dempsey had plans for fireworks and had stopped by his cousin's barber shop, and now the husband and father of three is gone. Uh, he's a great man. I mean, I'm here and I'm destroyed because I know he's a great man. This is somebody that I looked up to. So police sources tell Eyewitness News that Dempsey had 19 prior arrests. As for the off-duty officer involved here, he has three years on the force and is assigned to the 79th Precinct in Brooklyn. He was taken to the hospital early this morning and treated for minor injuries. We're live in East New York this noon. I'm Diana Rocco, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Diana. The latest now on that explosion in Central Park. The NYPD says someone with a basic knowledge of chemistry made the firework that injured an 18-year-old tourist when he stepped on it. He was seriously injured by the explosion. He lost his foot. Police do not believe the bag that exploded was meant to intentionally hurt anyone. It exploded when Connor Golden jumped from a rock onto it. Golden's grandmother says the Virginia native is an active young man who loves to hike. His life will never be the same, and I am very sad. There, this happened to him. Somebody did it. I don't know who. I don't even want to think about that person. Golden is expected to have a second surgery in the next few days to remove the rest of his leg below the knee. Count on Eyewitness News to follow any new developments in this ongoing investigation. The mayor and police commissioner are expected to speak about it this afternoon. We'll bring you updates on the air and online at ABC7NY. We now know the name of the toddler who died after falling more than a dozen stories from a building in Harlem as police pieced together what happened here. Three-year-old Latir Seen died at the hospital after falling out of a 13th story window. It happened just before 7.30 last night at the Harlem River houses and eyewitnesses say the three-year-old boy hit an air conditioning unit on the way down and a window guard was also on the ground below that window. The window guard was on the ground with the little boy. He fell out with the window guard. The mother got in the ambulance with him, and then she came right back out, and then they left. So we figured that he must have passed away because he was not responsive when they, um, you know, when they left. No charges in this case have been filed. 
In New Jersey this noon, nearly 30 people are without a home for the holiday weekend because of a four-alarm fire in Newark. Flames broke out on Pennsylvania Avenue late last night. It took nearly four hours to get the flames and the fire under control. More than 100 firefighters were part of the battle. One was sent to the hospital, but is expected to be okay. Amazingly, no one else was hurt. 21 adults and seven children cannot return home. The cause of that fire is under investigation. A bit of a warning this 4th of July. Smelly, thick, toxic algae has been spreading through one area, forcing people to wear masks and canceling holiday celebrations. Can it be stopped? And a major move here from the CEO who stepped down from a billion dollar company to take on another job for free. Temperatures are warming up on this 4th of July. It's looking really good. 81 degrees now across Long Island from Islip and eastward out toward East Hampton. 79 degrees. Lots of sunshine today. I'll have the latest on your fireworks weather for this evening. Coming up in your Act Weather Forecast in just a moment. So don't go away. Tomorrow at 5, Brown Tide. Eyewitness News gets a closer look at this nuisance. And they kind of get grossed out swimming in it. It's probably not a pleasant experience. And some nasty consequences. They're also toxic to shellfish, clams, oysters, and scallops. Tomorrow at 5. Here's reason to celebrate. Raymar and Flanagan's Independence Day sale. Save up to 29% on living rooms, up to 25% on bedrooms, and on... We have new details on that deadly car bomb attack in Iraq. The death toll rose today to 149 and could climb even higher. Authorities in Baghdad are still searching for people missing after yesterday's deadly truck bombing. It was one of the worst single bombings in more than a decade of war and insurgency in Iraq. The Islamic State group claims it carried out that attack. Meanwhile, we're getting a look at one of the attackers in the deadly attack on a restaurant in Bangladesh. Authorities have identified this man, 18-year-old Mir Samem al-Bashir. One official says five former hostages are being held by authorities, including a teacher at a private university in Dhaka, where police say one of the attackers was a student in the same department where the man teaches. A man with immeasurable contributions to post-war civilization and human rights causes around the world. Elie Wiesel, a Holocaust survivor and Nobel laureate, was remembered Sunday here in New York. A private service was held on the Upper East Side. Wiesel was born in Romania in 1928. He died this weekend in Manhattan. Last night, One World Trade paid tribute to Wiesel with its spire lit in blue and white, the colors of the Israeli flag. A pharmaceutical executive says she didn't really think twice about stepping down from a billion-dollar company to take care of her sister for free. Doctors diagnose Christy Shaw's older sister, Sherry, with multiple myeloma, a bone marrow cancer, two and a half years ago. But now she's been admitted into a clinical trial in St. Louis and requires full-time care. So Shaw offered to be there for her sister. It wasn't a difficult decision. My mother, unfortunately, had breast cancer, and my older sister took eight weeks caring for her. This decision was a logical step um, from a family perspective. Shaw and her sister plan to start a foundation to help families in similar situations who don't have the financial resources to take time off from work. Oh, life first and family pay it forward, first. right? Absolutely. 100%. We're seeing some wild weather on this holiday from funnel clouds to dangerous flooding. The place is forced to call off some of the 4th of July celebrations. And here in our area, we want the showers to hold off until after the fireworks. Will Mother Nature cooperate? Meteorologist Phil Evans is up next with your exclusive Independence Day AccuWeather forecast. Life's got one thing to say about our next co-host. Bazinga! Big Bang Theory's Jim Parsons. Oh my God. Plus Dennis Leary and Omari Hardwick. Next live. Watch live tomorrow morning at 9 on ABC7. Closed captioning is sponsored by Raymore and Flanagan. For the closest location, visit raymoreflanagan.com. If you're taking multiple medications, does your mouth often feel dry? A dry mouth can be a side effect of many medications, but it can also lead to tooth decay and bad breath. That's why there's Biotin. Available as an oral rinse, toothpaste, spray, or gel. Biotin can provide soothing relief, and it helps keep your mouth healthy, too. Remember, while your medication is doing you good, a dry mouth isn't. Biotin, for people who suffer from a dry mouth. Fios is not cable. We're wired differently. 
So we wired the Wagner's house with 100 meg internet, which means that in the time it takes Mr. Wagner to pour a 20-ounce cup of coffee, Tommy can download 30 songs and Jan can upload 120 photos. 12 seconds. That's the power of fiber optics. Only Fios lets you upload as fast as you can download. And right now, get these speeds with our best offer ever. Super fast 100 meg internet, TV, and phone for just $69.99 per month online with no annual contract. Now switching to Fios is easier than ever with hassle-free installation. We'll connect your devices to the new Wi-Fi, and there's no cost to cancel early if you change your mind within 30 days. Super fast 100 meg internet with equal upload and download speeds, plus TV and phone for just $69.99 per month online. Go to getfiles.com or call 1-888-GET-FIOS to learn more. Cable can't offer internet speeds this fast at a price this good. Only Fios can. We know quitting smoking isn't easy. If you're a Medicaid member, medications to help you quit are covered. Ask your doctor for help today and quit smoking for good. For more help, call 1-866-NY-QUITS. Welcome back. A storm slam to other parts of the country as we enjoy beautiful weather here for the holiday. Colorado, South Dakota were hit with hail. Ugh. More than nine inches of rain fell in parts of Kansas as well. Illinois was hit hard as well. Funnel clouds roared through Oklahoma with winds getting up to 60 miles per hour. But man, looking outside here, since we have all windows here at the yeah. studio. Yeah. Sunny. Eastern Colorado. Beautiful. And the panhandle of Nebraska. Yeah. That little slip of the panhandle of Nebraska. Yeah. Hail capital of the world. Is, Is it really? Yes. Ooh. You go all over Colorado, there's like a, a body shop every 10 yards. Yeah. Right? Oh, because of the dead. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All the, all the yeah. pebbled cars. <laughs> that's right. Here we go. We have no such issues. And if you're going to, like, say, take your boat over to the East River, you're going to be going over the East River for fireworks over on the Brooklyn side. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous. You're going to have some great weather. But just as I was talking about earlier, remember, it is going to be raining at the end of fireworks if you're lightly gagging around out there. 81 degrees, a dry humidity, a southwest wind. It's a perfect day. It really is nice. The pressure 3010, which always shows us that we've got fair weather whenever it's above 30.00. Normal highs 84. We're going to hit that today. We're not going to have much of a sunset because at 8:30 it's probably going to be cloudy by that time, and rain could start to get in closer toward midnight. So fireworks will be over by a little after 10 o'clock. So you'll want to, uh, you know, not wait around if you want to miss the rain. So that's probably going to start around 11 o'clock. So heat and humidity are really going to build Wednesday and Thursday and maybe even into Friday. We might actually have a heat wave on our way. 81 around Hanover, 82 you see toward Morris County and around Newark here and around 81 up the Hudson River Valley, Long Island and down toward Belmar. So the southwest wind makes the south facing shores a little cooler. It's just a six mile an hour wind there at Montauk and the Hamptons. And we're looking back here at the radar and that's the rain that is coming our way. It's a low pressure system and a warm front. Most all of it will stay city south, basically. I mean, it's the farther north you go, the less rain there'll be with this system. But as I was showing you, temperatures will get into the uh, mid 80s here for the afternoon before the clouds increase. So it's going to be cloudy for fireworks, but the ceiling's going to be pretty high. So there won't be, uh, you know, low clouds. The fireworks will be fine. It'll be great. And even you see at 10 o'clock, it's not raining yet. So about 11 o'clock to midnight is when we'll start seeing this rain coming over us. So you just uh, maybe want to take your umbrella for after fireworks, uh, making your way home. And then you see tomorrow morning, we've got a lot of rain around in the morning. And then it's out of here by midday tomorrow. And we're looking at some pretty weather with temperatures in the mid 80s tomorrow and we'll be looking at the humidity really picking up so sun and clouds 84 and then tonight we've got the rain steady after midnight we got rain for tomorrow morning and then sunny breaks in the afternoon it's warm and it's humid it's 85. look at wednesday 92 92 and maybe a scattered thunderstorm thursday you get that when you get the heat and the humidity and then it's 88 on friday saturday sunday in golf we call that the double snowman <laughs> Triple. Yeah. And, uh, I love when you go there. I love I, it. I would. I always like to. Would like to shoot the double snowman. I, Joe and I <laughs> played golf no, together. No. He's, he's seen my golf yeah, game. No, we didn't. <laughs> we would avoid snowmen any time of year. Yeah, for sure. So funny. All right, Very Bill. good. Thank you. Caught on camera. Look at this. A plane crashes into the water. Oh. Nose down. And people, oh, rush to the rescue. And a college student sets off on a run she hopes will change lives. We're going to tell you why it's a cause that is so close to her heart.
day with ABC7 this afternoon, starting with The Chew. Then at 2, Fab Life. And at 3, General Hospital. Followed by New York's number one news. Channel 7 Eyewitness News, first at 4. Some frightening moments on a lake in Texas this weekend as a plane crashes into the water and overturns. The terrifying ordeal is caught on camera. Jeff Grunska says he and his friends and family were relaxing at Lake Travis in Austin when they spotted a plane flying dangerously low. Moments later, the small plane slammed into the water, nose down, and then flipped over. Within about 45 seconds, it was completely submerged. People rushed in to help. Three people aboard the plane escaped without any serious injuries. A pride parade turns violent when pride supporters clash with street preachers. Video shows a 17-year-old girl punching two women at a parade in Washington last month. One of the women is pregnant. The religious group is now in the process of filing a lawsuit against the city and parade organizers. It is now confirmed that shark spotted off the Jersey Shore is, in fact, a great white. The people who captured this video off the marina in Longport, that's Atlantic County, say they sent it to a research institute with a great white database. Researchers confirmed the type of shark. A family that was fishing captured this video and describes the experience as life-changing. Michelle? Oh, boy. All right, thank you, Joe. <laughs> yeah, it could be. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that'll do it for sure. Potentially. <laughs> All right, thank you. Still to come on Eyewitness News at noon, a 4th of July tradition on Coney Island. We're going to take you live to the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. A warning about smelly, toxic algae with uh, a poisonous stench. Taking over some beaches, how far is it going to spread? And a scary sight for passengers, smoke. Look at that, pouring out of a plane's engine in midair. We're going to tell you what caused that and what the pilot was then forced to do next. Eyewitness News is coming right back. Live picture of the harbor, Lady Liberty. A little bit hazy outside, warm and sunny. Beautiful day to have off and celebrate the 4th of July with your family. But first, we want to take you to the live midday New York State Lottery drawing. Dampen your plans. Hello again, everyone. I'm Joe Torres. And I'm Michelle Charlesworth. Big question remains, is rain, will showers hold off until after the fireworks? Let's check in again with meteorologist Bill Evans. Hey, Bill. Well, we've got sunshine and a pretty noon hour here as we look down the East River here to Roosevelt Island. 81 degrees, our temperature, and it's nice and dry too, so low humidities. Southwest wind coming across here, so Sayreville is 82, Wrightstown 78, Long Branch 81 as we look down the Jersey Shore. Nice here across the South Shore of Long Island here, even coastal Connecticut, 78 here around the New York City beaches. It's nice, 81 degrees. We've got clear skies, clouds are to our south, and they'll start to stream in later this evening and overtake us. Then this batch of rain is what we'll be watching for tonight. Philly and D.C. likely to have a wet fireworks display, but we should be able to get the Macy's in in time before the rain gets here. We were just showing you that this afternoon will be in the low 80s. 10 o'clock tonight, your fireworks starts around 920, 925. You know, lasts a half hour or so, 25 minutes to a half hour. So 10 o'clock uh, or a little after is when the fireworks will be over. So you see around 11 o'clock and midnight, rain's going to start to overspread the area. So that will continue into tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning, and then the sun will come back out tomorrow afternoon. So on our guidance, we're really looking at the clouds starting to roll in around 7, 8 o'clock. So we could have a pretty good sunset before the rain gets here closer toward midnight. We'll talk about the rest of the week. We're going to be in the 90s in just a few minutes. Michelle, back to you. All right, we've got to get to this, Bill. Right now, a highly anticipated rematch is underway at this year's Nathan's Famous Hot Dog Eating Contest. Organizers expect a crowd of thousands. You know it's always crowded there. Eyewitness News reporter Nina Pineda is right in the middle of it in Con Coney Island for the competition. Nina. Hi. Oh, you're so right, Michelle. Thousands of people have gathered for the Super Bowl of scarf downs to see who can throw down the most hot dogs and buns. I'm going to show you what it looks like because the men have just gathered on the stage. They're being introduced, and you can see all the people watching on the screens, and they're right behind here on the corner of Stillwell and Surf, marking this tradition, this 100-year anniversary. Happy 4th of July. 
draws competitive eaters from around the world. Spectators gather here, um, just a block from the famous Coney Island boardwalk. The excitement this year is going to be to see if Joey Chestnut can regain the title he lost in an upset last year to Matt Stoney. They're both on the stage. Chestnut set a world record last weekend in the qualifying round in D.C. He actually ate 73 hot dogs. He has to see if he can beat his record here in Coney Island of 60 hot dogs. The women's event uh, went off at about 11 o'clock. Last year's winner, Mickey Sudo of Las Vegas, defended her title. Uh, she ate, actually ate 38 and a half. And fans of this spectator sport really say these competitors make it look easy because this sport requires some serious training. Most of them do water training or watermelon training, and that's how they can stretch out their stomachs to expand in the month before Coney. So do you think that Joey will regain his title? Oh, yes, and I think he's going to break his own record. I think he's going to eat 75 dogs today. What is this like, this 100-year tradition now to be celebrated at Coney Island? What does this mean to you? Oh, it's just so fantastic. We have this beautiful day, and we get to show off Nathan's to the world with our wonderful hot dog eating contest. It's so great. Hey, can you imagine this tradition started in the year 1916, 100 years later, that first competitor who won the contest ate 10 hot dogs. We're going to see if Joey Chestnut can eat 73 and get his belt back. We had a behind-the-scenes look uh, of the stage and the trophies. We'll bring all that to you at 5 o'clock, and ESPN will be carrying this as well at 3. If you miss it, tune into Channel 7. We'll show you all the fun from here in Coney Island. We're live, Nina Pineda, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Nina. They ate 10 hot dogs 100 years ago? That's, that's so 100 years ago. <laughs> Woo, a celebration in Southampton for the holiday. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo made an appearance in the annual July 4th parade there. Members of the military and the Long Island community marched and rode down that route. Don't forget, if you are looking for fireworks tonight, we got you covered. ABC 7 NY is your source for all the major shows happening in our area. Friends and family will gather tomorrow to say a final goodbye to the co-owner of a famous Brooklyn pizzeria as police search for the man who killed him. A wake was held yesterday in Diker Heights for Louis Barbati. The 61-year-old was killed outside his home last Thursday as he returned home from a day working at Ellen B. Spumoni Gardens. The Brooklyn Pizzeria has been in Barbati's family for four generations and is a staple in the community. I don't even know why anyone would want to hurt such an amazing man, such a family man. Like, that's the number one thing I think people don't really know about LMB is how family oriented it is. Barbati's family is offering a $50,000 reward in the search for his killer. This afternoon, we have video of the man police say sexually assaulted a young girl on the Lower East Side. Police say he cornered a six year old girl inside the stairwell of a building on Henry Street Saturday night. That's when he exposed himself and sexually assaulted her. If you recognize him, police want to hear from you. Now to the race for the White House. Hillary Clinton faced questions from the FBI about her use of a private email server while she was Secretary of State. Meantime, Donald Trump is on the defense about a tweet. ABC's Stephanie Ramos reports from Washington. No fireworks out of this closed-door meeting between the FBI and Hillary Clinton that lasted three and a half hours. Clinton speaking soon after on MSNBC Saturday. I was pleased to have the opportunity to assist uh, the department in bringing its review to a conclusion. The FBI nearing its final chapter of this investigation as to whether or not Clinton mishandled classified information on her private email server while she was Secretary of State. Clinton says the interview was civil and businesslike and so Something she offered to do last August. I will continue to, uh, you know, be as uh, forthcoming as uh, I can. The email saga has followed Clinton's campaign from the start. And now another story Clinton would like to put behind her. That tarmac meeting in Phoenix between Bill Clinton and U.S. Attorney General Loretta Lynch. Both of their planes, as I understand it, were landing on the same tarmac at about the same time. And the Attorney General's husband was there. They said hello. They talked about grandkids, which is very much on our minds these days. Donald Trump calling the meeting no coincidence. But this Trump tweet, using what some believe is the Jewish star of David to label Clinton the most corrupt candidate ever, layered over $100 bills, is being called anti-Semitic on social media. This morning, Trump tweeting, dishonest media is trying their absolute best to depict...